Okay, in this lesson, uh, lesson three, we're going to see some more examples of dilations. Um, we're going to look at circles and ellipses and see what happens when we dilate those by a scale factor. Um, and we're going to look at how we can undo a dilation if we, um, if we dilate a figure with a scale factor of r, how can we get it back to its original size? So <laughs> first I want you to, to just look at this, um, this figure here. We have a circle with center A, so we're going to call it circle A. We're going to dilate from um, the origin, from center O, and we're going to use a scale factor of 3. So all the distances will be tripled. So the distance to any point on this circle is going to go out on that ray um, three times as far as the original distance. So look at it, um, see what you can do with it, and then come back and we will work on it together. Okay, so here's an update on what I've done. I picked three points on the circle. I picked one here, here, and here, and I took them out to three times the distance. Um, so say for this point, um, it went here to here to here is triple. On this one right here, went out to here. Um, that's not enough. I can't really see my circle yet, although I know it's kind of down in this area. So what I'm going to need to do is pick a few more points. And so I'm going to do that, and you can try it too. Um, I'm going to pick a point on the top of the circle and then maybe a few more in here and see if I can get a handle on that. Maybe this one right here and there. I'm going to do, I'm going to dilate those points and see what they look like out here. Okay, so my circle is starting to kind of come out. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six points. Um, this one is not a point. That's just a, that's just a mark right there. So these are my six points. I'm going to do one more. I'll just demonstrate this one so that you, if you're um, struggling with how to do this. So once again, I'm setting my, this, uh, let's move this into the field of view. Setting my center point here right on the origin and holding it down. Then I'm going to move, uh, let's loosen this just a tiny bit. I move this to line up with the point that I want to dilate next, which is this one on the top of the circle. So I'm going to move in there and try not to do too much shadow here for you. So I move this down until the compass is right on my point. Okay, so it's right there. I'm going to tighten that. All right, so I'm going to mark it just to make sure. Okay, I think I got it. Then I'm going to move the center part of my compass up to, up to that point on the circle. Put it right there. Find the line, and it's the, this top line right here. I have a bit of a art project. Okay, so there's my, this would be r equals 2. I want to go out one more for r equals 3. So I'll put my compass right there. You could also do this with a ruler. It's your choice. I kind of like the compass because it's um, maybe a little bit more accurate. Okay, I'm starting to see that circle kind of come. I need a point maybe over here. Um, so this one right here would be the next one to do. So I'm starting to, it's starting to get a little confusing because I have a lot of lines going out. But it's kind of fun to see this actually happen here. So I'm going to do that right there. I know you can't see that. My hand's in the way. Um, okay, so I'm marking that one. This will be the last one I do for you. Here we go. Right there. And this is the line here. So this is the one I want to line up with right there. And make another arc. Okay, 
So this point through that line, there's two and there's r equals three. So there's my point. So I could almost sketch my circle right here. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna come right around here and right there. Okay, it's a little, little iffy. But there's my dilated circle. That's pretty cool. So I've got all these rays going out um, and I've marked off for a scale factor of r equals 3. So the dimensions of this circle should be, this circle has a diameter of 2. Our enlarged circle has a diameter of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Diameter of 6 there. So um, which makes sense with our scale factor. Okay, I want to show you um, some samples that were already done. Um, here's one with even more points than what I had right here. Um, with, more, with more points marked, the circle is even more clearly defined. Um, but the points have to be chosen carefully because look at this dilation right here. This one has all the points chosen on the top, so I still can't draw the circle even though I have the same number of points as the last one. Um, and here's one where points just on the lower half of the circle were used, um, or points where there were points on either side of the circle. So it's not so much the number of points, but the placement of points. So if you place the points with enough around and uh, for a curved figure like this, um, then you're gonna get a better idea of the shape of the image. Okay, so we're going to, I'm gonna have you work on the next exercise. Um, and this one, is an ellipse. Okay, so we are going to use scale factor of two. Um, use as many points as necessary to develop the dilated image of ellipse E. Okay, so um, go ahead and work on that and then come back. I'll work on it and show you, show you my work at, and you can compare yours. Okay, so for the ellipse, I've started with four points, and I chose the, the top and bottom of the ellipse and both sides. And so far, I've drawn the rays out. So what I need to do now is mark off the distance with my compass or my ruler. I'm going to choose my compass and um, make sure I'm doubling those distances. So I'll put this on here. Um, Get that dialed in right on top of the point. So I've got I've got my hole right here on the point. Let's double check it. Yeah. And then I'm gonna move up to the point and find my line, pencil in, and mark the arc. Okay, so looks like it's about right here. Okay, so I've gone over and up, over and up. All right, so that will be the bottom point, and I'm going to erase the extra marks there. Okay, so now I'm going to do this one right here, um, marking it on the origin, finding sliding until that point shows up in the hole there, and then tightening it down. I think I've got it. Double check it, yep. Move the compass out so that that point is in the crosshairs and then mark for my new point right here. Okay, so there's gonna be the side of the ellipse. So I've got one, two, now I need to do the top point. Okay, so you get the idea, you could work on this. I'm gonna go ahead and do um, eight points all together and we'll see how that goes. Sometimes you can, you've got rays drawn. Since I've got this ray drawn through here, I think I'll do that point. It's already marked. 
And I might do this one right here and that one. Okay? Because um, each, each of these rays in the middle is going through the lips twice, so I can use them. I can mark two points on the same ray. Okay. Okay, my enlarged ellipse is starting to emerge now, so I'm going to connect, connect my dots. Just the low point here comes around and up like so. So I could have used a few more to make it even a smoother, a smoother line. Here is an example, another example from the answer document. They used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten points it looks like. 12 points because some of them were on the same line. So they got, um, a, you know, an even smoother curve, but I could see, I could see where that was going. So the question down here is what is the shape of the dilated image? Um, the shape is an ellipse enlarged by scale factor of two. Okay. So dilations map these curved figures to similar curved figures of the same shape. Okay, let's. Um, we're going to move back to triangles. The circles and ellipses were were fun, and and I think it's really interesting to see how that shape emerges. The more and more points you get, um, triangles are a little easier, right? Because once we find the vertices, all we have to do is connect those dots. So we can just use three points on a triangle. Although we could use we could use more in between. We don't need to. All right. So this is my original triangle in this drawing. And I dilated it by a scale factor of r equals one third. And when I did that, I came up with a prime, b prime, c prime right here. So these distances, um, this is one third of this whole distance. So what that, what I did was um, I said the length of OA prime is going to equal the scale factor time the times the original length. So OA prime, this distance, is one third of that distance, that whole distance. So for instance, if O to A was six, OA prime would be one third times six, which would be two. So one third of six is two, okay? So if my original length is six, my new length is two. Okay, so what we wanna, um, what we're gonna be talking about in the last part of this lesson is how we um, can undo a translation. Undoing is kind of a big idea in math. So you've seen undoing with operations. So if I add, subtraction undoes. And if I multiply, division will undo that. And so, um, so this is it's kind of a, a useful thing to be able to do. So if I want to get from this figure back to this figure, what would I need to do? So you might want to pause the video and think about that, try to figure it out. Okay, um, so if we wanted to go from this triangle back to that one, our, our dilated one back to the original, it kind of makes sense, especially if we look at the example that we chose. If OA prime is two and OA is six, my scale factor needs to be three. So that OA, The length of OA, because this is now my dilated length, would equal some scale factor times OA prime. And using our example, if I had 6 um, equals R 
times two times two. So you can see here that R would have to equal three in this case. So if I started with a scale factor of one third, to undo that dilation, I would need to use a scale factor of three. Okay, here's another example. Um, in the picture below, we have a triangle DEF um, and here it is, that has been dilated from center O by a scale factor of four. And the dilated triangle is D prime, E prime, F prime. Okay, so based on the example we just did, and that was the one with the scale factor of one third, um, make a conjecture about how we could map this new triangle D prime, E prime, F prime, back onto the original triangle. Okay, so um, the difference, what is the difference between this example and the last one? Okay, think about that. Um, in the last one, we were, we, it was, uh, um, we shrank, shrunk. However you say that. We made it smaller. We made that triangle smaller by a scale factor of one third. In this case, we enlarged, and then we wanna go from the enlargement back to the small triangle. So we know that the scale factor, we're starting with the scale factor of R equals four. To get back, to undo, um, uh, our scale factor is going to be, think about this, it's got to be greater than zero, but less than one. So we need um, a fractional scale factor to shrink this back down to size. So think about what that scale factor would be if we, let's choose some, some dimensions. So we used a scale factor of four, so if this original length here, OF, was, say, two, then OF prime, the length of OF prime would equal four times the length of OF. So if OF is two, OF prime would be four times two or eight. So we would have this length here, OF prime would be eight. So how could we undo that? If, if now, if we're going backwards, then we've got our length OF would be some scale factor times O F prime. And we know what these numbers were. O F was two and O F prime. Sorry, I'm writing off the screen again. I always do this in class too, don't I? Um, o F prime was, was eight and I should have put it in there. So two is equal to some scale factor R times OF prime, which we said was eight, okay? So you can see that um, the scale factor that we need right here would be one fourth because one fourth times eight is two. So here R, I don't have enough room here, R is equal to one fourth. So for a scale factor of four, we needed a scale factor of one fourth to undo it. So let's kind of summarize what we have here. For our, for our scale factor, for r equals three, um, no, that's not what it was. It was, um, let me get that off of there. For r, for r equals one third to undo 
we needed r equals 3. Um, for r equals 4, to undo, we needed r equals 1 fourth. Okay, so you can kind of see what's going on here. It's their reciprocals. One third and three are reciprocals. Four and one fourth are reciprocals. So what if we had something slightly more complicated? What if r was um, another fraction between zero and one? What if it was two thirds? What would undo r equals two thirds? What do you think it would be? Three halves. Okay, so those are reciprocals of one another. So, um, and this would think about this. This is this is shrinking because it's less than one. This it, this reciprocal is greater than one, so it would magnify it. Um, okay, so kind of thinking about in general terms. What does it mean to say the reciprocal will undo it? Okay, so you could think about that, pause the video, and come back. Okay, so to shrink, to shrink or magnify, okay, or to reduce or enlarge um, a figure, whoops. A dilated figure from center O. With a scale factor of R. And this is all in your lesson summary. I'm just writing it for you. Um, with a scale factor of R. So we've we want to shrink or magnify a dilated figure that's been dilated with a scale factor of R um, back to its original size. Um, back to the original size. We would use A scale factor of 1 over R. Okay, so that works for all of these and it looks a little funny to you probably, but if I've got R equal to 1 third, 1 over R is 3. This is the easiest one to see. If R is 4, 1 over r is 1 fourth. If r is 2 thirds, 1 over r is 3 halves. And um, kind of maybe just take the opportunity to, to show you this. So if r is 2 thirds, think about this. 1 over 2 thirds is, is the same thing as 1 divided by 2 thirds because the fraction bar just means divided by. Um, and this is when we divide, we multiply by the reciprocal. So this is one times three halves or three halves. So one over two thirds is three halves. And you can see this with, call these complex fractions, fractions within fractions. And we saw that in seventh grade, but you might not remember it. Um, and you could put one third in there, or you could put four. If you put four in there, you're done. But if you put one third or two thirds in there, you just have to do a little bit of rearranging to get it to come out. Okay, so we're gonna, um, you could work on exercise uh, three in your, in your packet, and we'll come back and check that together. All right, so this exercise says, the triangle ABC, which is the larger one, has been dilated from center O by a scale factor of R equals 1 fourth. And that dilation is denoted by triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Using a ruler, verify that it would take a scale factor of 4 
of r equals 4 from center O to map triangle A prime B prime C prime onto ABC. Okay, so if we're going to use a ruler to verify that, um, we're going to go here. So what does that mean? So we're going to verify this is going to take a scale factor of r equals 4. So then I would be saying that O A prime, the length of O A prime, uh, times my scale factor of 4, I'll put it here, times 4, would equal the length O A. Okay, so let's measure OA prime, and we'll measure OA, and we'll verify that that is correct. So I'm going to use centimeters, and I'm going to go to the tenth of a centimeter to be as exact as possible. So I am getting 2. 2.2 for OA prime. So this one here is 2.2 and I'm multiplying that by 4 4 times 2.2 and I want to verify that that equals this total distance. So um, I don't know if you'll be getting exactly the same measurements that I am I'm getting 8.9 about, so it's off by a little bit because it should have been 8.8. .8. So 8.8 .8 is approximately 8.9. That's not too far to be off. So we have verified the scale factor of 4 for this length. Um, I'll make the measurements on the other two and you can check it against my work. All right, here's the results I got for, for this exercise. So I um, checked to see that 4 times OB prime would equal the distance OB. Then I found that 4 times 1.4, I was checking, I got 1.4 for OB prime, 5.7 for OB. So that's within a tenth of a centimeter right there. These are all all these measurements are in centimeters here. And then for OC prime, I got it to come out exactly. I measured 1.7 for OC prime, 6.8 for OC, so those are equal. So we verified that a scale factor of R equals 4 undoes um, a scale factor of R equals 1 fourth. Okay, so um, let's just kind of recap what we've talked about and then will be done and you can do your um, exit ticket and, and lesson uh, problem set. So dilations map circles to circles and ellipses to ellipses. So it, this doesn't just work for um, polygons or straight sided figures but it works for curved figures as well. If a figure is dilated by a scale factor R, to bring the dilated figure back to the original size we must dilate it by a scale factor of 1 over R talking about the reciprocal here. So for example, if a scale factor is R equals 4, then to bring the dilated figure back, we must dilate by a scale factor of R equals 1 fourth. Um, okay, so in this problem set, you're going to dilate some interesting um, figures. So you're going to do a heart. Um, that's a curved figure. And um, see how many points you think you need to be able to get a good image of that. You're dilating by a scale factor of two. All right, so some interesting problems. Have fun with that. And um, we'll see you back here for lesson four.